Yes, we can start. Yeah. So, good afternoon, everybody. I, Dr. Sachin Kadam, Chief Technology Officer of Advanced Sales Group, welcomes you all in today's webinar. I warmly welcome our eminent speaker for today's uh, talk, Dr. Somnath Pai. Uh, Dr. Pai has received his PhD from uh, Cochin University of Science and Technology in 2007. He holds many peer-reviewed publications to his credential. Dr. Pai is a polyglot. He has command over six Indian language and three foreign language. Uh, Dr. Pai is uh, presently working as an assistant professor at Amity Institute of Virology and Immunology, Amity University, Noida. His key research area is in uh, diversity of Vibrion in coastal marine ecosystem, antibiotic resistance in marine environment, bacteriophages in uh, marine environment, chronic viral infection, etc. Being a virologist, I think he is the perfect person uh, for today's uh, talk when uh, you know entire world is fighting against coronavirus and struggling to uh, survive. So he will be talking today uh, on resistance to microbial growth. Let's fight against the superbug. So without uh, wasting any further time, I invite Dr. Pai to deliver his uh, talk. Uh, Dr. Pai, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. And so I will not uh, take much of our time and then keep it in head in. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we, today I'm here to talk to you about a problem that is uh, growing concern globally, where uh, much of the diseases, that is bacterial diseases, that we have been uh, thinking that we, have, we can control uh, in the population are now re-emerging with, with new vigor and new uh, strength to, cause, to, to become uh, with because of antimicrobial resistance. And uh, so there was a euphoria when antibiotics were first, were first discovered and uh, we were able to treat all the diseases that plagued the uh, human population right through centuries with the antibiotics. But our misuse of these, of these uh, magic bullets uh, has resulted that has resulted in generation of superbugs as we call them because they have now become so some of them have become totally drug resistant resistant and are, in, are impervious to treatment uh, regimen non treatment regimen so therefore I'm here to so today I'll just highlight the problems associated with antibiotic resistance. And we'll take this, and, and I'll take you through the mechanism and, uh, and 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 what we can do about it. Uh, Doctor Pai, your voice is not audible to audience. Please raise your voice, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So today I'm here to talk about the, the, the um, growing concern of antibiotic resistance in the, in, in, in the clinic and uh, how it is how it is causing a problem to the population as a whole in future, how it might work. So since we stand here today, uh, we stand uh, today at about 700,000 deaths globally being attributed to uh, antibiotic resistance. And this is projected to cause a, a, about a hundred trillion dollar loss uh, to the economy by 2050. So we are not, uh, so therefore this is a very serious concern and this is uh, and therefore and if you look at the picture this uh, the scenario where uh, if now if cancer is the major cause of death uh, globally at the moment in the amongst diseases it is uh, the, the the concern that in by 2050 it is going to be death due to antibiotic resistant bacteria okay so this is uh, uh, so this is where we are going to proje uh, projecting if we do not take steps right now to, to arrest this growth of the superbugs. So where this what is, so even the person who discovered uh, the antibiotic Alexander Fleming was very much aware of how it could be misused, how it could be misused because writing in New York Times in 1945 in an essay. Uh, he very he wrote that there will be a huge public demand for these uh, drugs, and public demand means there will be abuse of the doctor. And therefore, he he warned the society 
against making antibiotics so freely available as they are today, uh, as they are today, uh, because we have to prevent. Because if you see right uh, at this, uh, he had already he had already seen resistance to penicillin in 1940 itself. But remember that it was not until 43 until penicillin was introduced into the commercial market. So that means antibiotic resistance was pre-existing in the environment, it pre-exists in the environment. And this is what we have seen with almost all, some of the, this is some of the list of antibiotics that, were, that when they were introduced commercially into the market and when the resistance against them was observed. So if you see, it doesn't take much time for an, for an antibiotic resistance bacteria to emerge once an antibiotic is introduced into the market. So this is uh, something which is highlighted. So that's why when bedaquiline was introduced in 2012, it was decided that it would be administered only to to, to people, to mycobacterium tuberculosis patients who would uh, who would who would not respond to any other form, any other known treatment regimen. So this is, uh, but uh, this was basically decided because. Betaquilin is the last for, last line of defense against uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, and uh, so therefore it, it, it's, a, it's a bacterium that is very notorious in antibiotic resistance, and it's in, and it's lurking in the environment all around us. And but in 2017, we began to see reports where uh, betaquilin resistance began to be observed in mycobacterium tuberculosis. And mind you, this is not being observed in patients who are being treated with betaquilin, but these were observations in, in patients who were naive to betaquilin, who were never given administered betaquilin, who were not exposed to betaquilin before this. So that means that, that means there, is, there, there are mechanisms working in the environment where, bacteria, where the bacteria can gain the antibiotic resistance. But so how has human activities uh, resulted in, uh, in, in, in antibiotic resistance. If you see, antibiotics were first um, introduced, were, were discovered and introduced for human health care to treat diseases, to treat in, for in, in health care and to treat diseases. But bulk production and market, market uh, requirements expanded their use far beyond health care. Where we see today antibiotics are being used in agriculture, aquaculture, animal husbandry, everywhere that we can find it. So, and in fact, currently, 80%, more than 80% of the usage is accounted by these sectors and not from human healthcare. So therefore, the abuse of antibiotics is much, much higher than its actual use. So this is this is a very so this is how we, uh, human activities are directly contributing to the growing threat of antibiotic resistance in the environment. And if you see, antibiotic use in livestock is not something unique to a single country. It is global in prevalence. Every country in the world is using antibiotics in, in livestock. And we don't want to point fingers at, uh, at those who are using more or less, but in effect, this is something that, that should concern us and stop the use of antibiotics in, uh, in livestock and animal husbandry practices, or at least we must minimize their use. So how do antibiotics uh, work? What, what, what is? So, we, so they, antibiotics uh, target various uh, parts or, or various components of bacteria or their metabolic functions. So some of the antibiotics can, in, uh, are, are they, some of the antibiotics directly in, inhibit cell wall synthesis or their components of the cell wall. So uh, penicillin is the most famous example of this and we still use it today. And some of the others like cell membrane, there, there are other uh, antibiotics that can disrupt cell membrane functions. So these antibiotics tend to create holes in the membrane which disrupt membrane and the cell is then exposed to the environment and, it, and the cell dies. So remember that cell membrane is the most crucial component of the bacteria of a cell. Without the cell membrane, the cell does not exist. And other antibiotics target the metabolic uh, pathways inside the bacteria, the metabolic processes. So there are metabolism and enzyme inhibitors, and they can inhibit or they can target uh, DNA replication of the bacteria 
or they can also uh, target uh, they can also target the transcription where uh, the DNA is uh, copied from uh, from the DNA to mRNA synthesis or from or the protein synthesis process that is the translation process where they can inhibit the protein synthesis function so all this uh, different modes uh, different modes of action actually help us to decide the which course of uh, antibiotic is to be given for a, against a particular bacterial disease so we can mix and match in this manner and target uh, different aspects of the bacteria so that it can be dealt with uh, very strongly so however so being these this being the modes of action so of antibiotics and bacteria have developed very uh, myriad ways okay a variety of ways to tackle this resistance to tackle these antibiotics and they have they have devised they devise, have devised different mechanisms they use these different mechanisms one or more of them and uh, to uh, to counter or overcome the antibiotic pressure that's on them that's on them so therefore it's continuing war so some of them like beta lactamase okay it which confers resistance to penicillin it is um, it, it it breaks down pen so it's an enzyme that is produced by the bacteria which breaks down penicillin so therefore it cannot uh, the, the antibiotic now becomes resist, uh, is is no longer able to kill is uh, to kill the bacteria to to cause a problem to the bacteria otherwise the some of the bacteria also have devised uh, other proteins that can bind to penicillin so something like the, in, which we see in uh, mrsa or staphylococcus so this is a pen so this uh, in this mechanism what happens is uh, the pro the uh, the protein binds to the antibiotic and makes and makes it um, uh, and makes it dysfunctional so thereby thereby either negating its action completely or reducing its effect uh, is is ne negative effect on the bacteria so therefore the bacteria is able to overcome so they can alter the permeability of the cell wall as well so which will not allow the antibiotic to enter and this is used for so enter the bacterial cell it's at all to 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 attack the cell so so the other so other mechanisms and one of the uh, a very strong mechanism that is uh, seen is is is, the, is about active reflux pump pumps where in the bacterial uh, pump system that is in on the membrane pump system work actively to 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 pump the antibiotic out of the cell before it can even cause an act cause cause uh, because before it can even act on its site of action so it is uh, so active reflux pumps are, are, are uh, and then another feature that the bacteria has is to form biofilm this is a serious problem because biofilm formation allows the bacteria is a, is a bacterial evolutionary uh, adapt, adaptation to overcome to overcome toxic uh, to, to overcome harsh conditions okay so they can overcome uh, desiccation they can overcome uh, they can overcome toxins environmental toxins so by forming biofilm this also allows them to colonize uh, new areas and uh, different and difficult surfaces on the other hand this biofilm formation is uh, so therefore biofilm allows bacteria to form or to carve out uh, niches in 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 a variety of uh, habitats but this is a problem when it comes to uh, hospital settings because especially in healthcare wherein uh, as in healthcare because uh, especially in the tubing or in the icu settings we have the biofilm formations can 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 cause uh, as the, the main cause of uh, patients getting hospital acquired infections so because they can they can last there they can withstand the uh, the cleansing processes and uh, abusing this they, because of this and so they could also form a very effective barrier uh, by bacteria to overcome uh, antibiotic to overcome antibiotics or any other toxins so how does resistance occur so what happens is in any given population of a bacteria there are various kinds of uh, mutants that exist that that uh, or that may be exist also. So some bacteria. So therefore, when a, when a, when that population is exposed to a particular uh, stress, in this case, let's say an antibiotic, then the susceptible ones are the first to die. Of course, but what remain are the ones that that can withstand the antibiotic. 
whatever the mechanism that they have. They may, this may be a mutation or it may be a whatever they have, whatever the mechanism by which they are able to work on. So these bacteria now, because the computation is now no longer there, they gain a, they gain a niche advantage and they, uh, and they are able to now colonize uh, and they're able to grow uh, freely without any barriers because now the cell-to-cell -cell competition does not, is, is no longer there to, to prevent their, uh, their, their, their growth. So therefore, now that's not this antibiotic resistant bacteria are the ones that will grow in that, in that uh, setting and they get selected. And eventually these bacteria, and because the bacterial uh, bacteria are, are, are quite promiscuous in, in, when it comes to exchange of genetic material, so they can pass this, uh, they can pass this resistance which they have to other bacteria that they don't have. So the, so the bacteria that don't have the resistance can acquire from can acquire it from the ones that possess that resistance uh, mechanism. So this is this is a general uh, general idea about uh, how the resistance uh, how bacteria acquire the uh, resistance. Doctor Pai, could you please increase your volume? Uh, okay. So. How, so now, back, how do bacteria become resistant? How do they gain this? What are the mechanisms? There are mainly three main mechanisms by which they gain resistance, and that is, and the, the one is a mutational resistance by which they mutate the protein that is being targeted by the antibiotic, and they and, and thereby it decreases the affinity to the drug, or the mutation may decrease the up drug uptake by the by, at the membrane level. Or they can some mutations in mutations in which uh, taking place in the efflux pumps can, uh, ex, can 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 send the molecule can send that antibiotic out from the cell uh, without uh, it causing any ill effects to the bacteria. Then a bit, a very major apart from this uh, a very major uh, mechanism by which bacteria become resistant is by horizontal gene transfer. Horizontal gene transfer is a is a is an evolutionary adaptation of bacteria, with, by which they are able to acquire new genes from the environment. So this may be because uh, this may they, they may do this by uh, transformation, uh, by which they have the means to uptake naked DNA from the environment into the cell, and this is how a lot of plasmids are acquired by the bacteria, and we exploit this uh, technique in when we do cloning in the lab and uh, where we can induce uh, bacterial cells to take up uh, plasmid, plasmid DNA of our interest, but in the environment, uh, they, can acquire the, they can acquire resistance for using plasmids. So that's how plasmids get transferred between bacteria, from bacteria to bacteria. Another, main, another uh, mode of uh, horizontal gene transfer is, is transduction, uh, which is uh, phage mediated. And so there are bacteriophages that can carry uh, that can carry the genes uh, uh, of uh, that confer resistance to antibiotics, and this can then this can uh, th then once they enter a bacteria and lysogenize and uh, stay inside the cell inside the bacterial cell, the bacteria then gains the resistance to that antibiotic. Another mode of, of, of uh, horizontal gene transfer is by conjugation. Or which is uh, the bacterial uh, equivalent of uh, sex. So this is this is where uh, the two bacterial cells can exchange genetic material in order to gain a selective advantage. Of, uh, to, in order to gain a selective advantage. So therefore, uh, this is these are three, and this is an evolutionary adaptation. I don't think we can stop this ever. So this is this is the way bacteria gain uh, new genes or acquire new genes from the environment. And to become uh, and to uh, to adapt to new environments and new niches. Integrons are present in many bacteria. These are uh, site-specific recombination systems that are uh, there. Uh, are, and uh, vibrios are uh, one of the, are, are, a, are the species that carry an integron, in, which is a, which is inside their chromosome. So therefore, these are integrons are sites which allow bacteria. To, adapt, to, uh, to incorporate new genes, because uh, uh, by inco incorporate new genes um, uh, and acquire a new, new, uh, a new phenotype. So this is, uh, so integrons are, 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 are quite common in, in bacteria, which, with which they can acquire uh, new genes. 
So in the environment of our use, we talked about antibiotics being used in, uh, in various industries across various industries and everywhere. So how does the cycle work? So when, it's, when we are using them, the, when, when we say, well, let's talk about the clinical setting where a person is, uh, is, is, is administered an antibiotic and in the healthcare setting, and he then proceeds, he is then taken into, into the hospital care. And in the hospital system, uh, because of uh, whatever the measures not being sufficient enough, uh, sufficient enough, the, the bacteria in the bacteria gained and resistance and remained in the hospital and around it. So that it, and now in the hospital, this bacteria can now spread to other patients. And this is why we see a lot of a lot of hospital acquired infections on the rise in, in, in and hospitals uh, do, uh, do do carry out a lot of measures to prevent this but nevertheless this is a very growing threat in healthcare settings and now when the patients go home they can spread this bacteria to other individuals around in their community now on the other hand when the bacteria when the antibiotics are used in the environment in in poultry in in uh, in in piggeries and in uh, veterinary, in, in cow farming, etc. So agriculture crops. So when we when antibiotics are used here, these antibiotics appear in the in, in what we consume, whether it's in the vegetables or whether or, or vegetable fruits or grains or in or even in the or in the meat or so or eggs. So therefore, these now this and now people now the community is directly exposed to these antibiotics. And we all carry and we all carry a, a more bacteria in our bodies than our individual cells, than our human cells. So therefore, all the bacteria that are present inside our body are now exposed to these antibiotics at sublethal levels, and they can now gain resistance to it. And we can and they can then transfer this resistance across to other and, and to a pathogen as well. So, the, so therefore, this is how the cycle works in the environment. And this is what we need to break as far as the uh, antibiotic spread or to, to break the spread of antibiotic resistance. So what are the threats? So some threats, uh, CDC lists out certain uh, criteria where it's, so it's, so they have grouped uh, certain pathogens under various categories like urgent threats, serious threats or, con or concerns. Uh, this is largely based on how much how prevalent is, is the antibiotic resistant uh, bacterial uh, cases that are there. So if it's more than 20%, then they go under urgent threat. If it is around uh, 20%, then, uh, they, then, we, uh, then it comes under a serious threat. Or if it is less than that, it goes, goes, goes to a less concerned threat. But however, this is just a classification to guide, uh, to guide the treatment uh, regimens or management management plans and, and but but yes nevertheless the threat of antibiotic resistance as you can see from the spread of from from this list itself almost every known pathogen of uh, that we know is is is, is, is now antibiotic resistant uh, variety strains of them are there and they are lurking in the environment so how do we so how is it? one of the main most common place where antibiotics are misused is the, the prophylactic use when we have a common cold issue. So it is this, when we have a, an often, almost every prescription when we go to a doctor uh, for a common cold, we come back with, 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 a do, with, with an antibiotic course. Uh, so this, and, and remember that almost more than 80% of the flu or the common flu or the common cold is caused by viruses and not by bacteria. And antibiotics have absolutely no effect on viral, on viruses. So therefore, it is a, so we are taking antibiotics during a cold when we don't need it, actually. So, so therefore, so this is one of the most common place where in, 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 uh, where we, where antibiotics are misused in clinical settings where we don't use them. Now, another uh, thing is, the, the, we've asked the, the advice from the pharmacist. Yeah, this is something that we do very commonly in India. So an Indian, 
So generally, in, we, our our healthcare works in this way. We have we, we have more charity care for kids, wherein the advice for uh, for drugs are is taken from our peers or even a passerby, and uh, or even the even the pharmacist sitting at the, in in a in a drug drug store. So a pharmacist therefore plays a role as not only just a salesman at the at standing at the shop. He's also doubling up as a health professional. And what's his qualification to do that? Well, 75% of the, of the people working as a salesman in drug stores in India are no more than, than uh, high school uh, passers. So therefore, and we, are and, and we are taking health advice from them. Okay. And what does he base on, and what does he base this, uh, base his uh, vending of the drugs out? Economics is of course, because he has some antibiotics that are unsold for a long time, he might pass it on to a customer. And, or otherwise, he may also, he may also choose that, okay, the uh, doctors around his area are prescribing X brand as, as most frequently, so he just delivers, he just pushes that X brand a more than uh, to the patient. So it is not at all an educated or any kind of advice that we can take that something we should not go to. But this is what we do. And why do we do that? It's that it lies with the more economic because most of us don't want to go to a doctor when we a doctor or a hospital because of the because of the expenses involved. Okay. So this is so that's why that's why and so, the, so this is one reason uh, why in we there's uh, so much of misuse. And often these enter, these antibiotics are taken at doses that are not the not the recommended doses. The course is not completed, never completed, and so therefore we are asking for the system to develop within ourselves all, all the time. And each time we have a cold, and each time we go to a store and pick up an antibiotic. So how do we fight AMR? How do we fight this? So the, basically we need to fight infection. We need to prevent infection. So vaccinations are one 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 way to do that. So we. Uh, we take, uh, we have to, we vaccinate ourselves against the available vaccine. And otherwise, for the, otherwise we keep ourselves uh, fit. Okay, we keep ourselves fit and we keep ourselves uh, healthy and uh, immunomodulatory, uh, immunomodulatory uh, from things like, uh, you know, we take ginger, haldi, etc. All these also can be uh, taken to prevent infections. We have to reduce the antibiotic use in Indian medicine. So common cold is probably the first place that it should stop. And uh, a large amount of antibiotics in clinical settings would be reduced. The use of antibiotics in clinical settings would be, would be reduced if we just stop taking antibiotics for a common cold. And uh, we have to improve our animal antibiotic use. Prophylactic use is, must be prevented because, uh, and uh, must be prevented, or at least we must have um, di totally different class of antibiotics that are for animal use and that are for human medicine use, which, are, which hopefully uh, bacteria will not uh, will, will not cross will not gain a cross resistance against. So uh, tracking this is something uh, that uh, governments need to work upon and antibiotic stewardship as well. So this is already started. These have these have efforts to do to, to do these have already started in various countries across the across the world, including in India. So where it is aimed that we must track the antibiotic from its production to its use. So therefore, uh, so therefore there is a traceability that is uh, included in in the in the system. So we can trace the antib and, and the antibiotic use and uh, international focus. Yes. The problem is never local. Antibiotic resistance uh, is not a local issue. It, uh, it, it is a global issue because just to put things in perspective, uh, a lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria have been observed in the, in, in, in the pristine environments of even Antarctica in where no, no human had ever reached before. And so therefore uh, bacteria because uh, Global weather, or the, the air, the water, the, the wind—they can carry bacteria to, to any part of the world from anywhere. So, therefore, uh, in, so we need an international focus. The problem is not local, 
and therefore the, 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 this has gone into the focus of WHO as well. And we need new drugs and diagnostic tests. So we, uh, we need alternatives and we need uh, new diagnostic tests to detect, uh, to, to quickly detect antibiotic resistant bacteria. Uh, and, and so that a quicker, uh, quicker treatment regimen can be uh, planned for the patient. So one alternative that I would like to talk about, apart from the many that exist, including our own uh, traditional systems of Ayurveda and Siddha. So we can, uh, so PARS therapy is, it seems to be a viable option. So initially when PARS were discovered, PARS are natural uh, enemies of bacteria, we can say. So they can, they can lyse a bacterial cell or they, they can lyse a bacterial cell and so therefore it is an ongoing evolutionary evolutionary process of, uh, of, of, of uh, between the bacteria and the, and the bacteriophages so we can exploit the bacteriophages for to, for to, for a treatment for treatment purposes so initially when phages were discovered uh, they were in fact applied to treat uh, uh, bacterial diseases like shigella e coli etc but uh, the advent of antibiotics in 1940s um, to, and uh, they took, uh, kept and uh, put the bacteriophages into a hibernation, sent it into a kind of hibernation, especially in the West, uh, because antibiotics became with, with a more uh, elegant and uh, acceptable uh, to the public because uh, phage therapy had its problems when it, when it began because most phages are delivered where they were being delivered in the form of uh, spent broth or uh, bacterial lysis, bacterial lysis. And bacterial lysis are inherently uh, toxigenic because they contain a lot of, um, they contain a lot of LPS, which is a potent uh, stimulator of, uh, of, uh, immune, of the immune system. So therefore one can have very, very bad uh, reactions and uh, reactions and moreover, uh, they just don't smell good at all. Okay. So bacterial bacterial lysis are, are, are not not very not very nice things to, to consume as a, as, a, as a, even as a medication. But yes, so there were a the problem. So therefore, the antibiotics uh, put the phage therapy efforts into hibernation, especially in the West. But in the Soviet Union, it was still continued at that time because they had less access to antibiotics than the West. So therefore, it was uh, as, as the Soviet Union uh, countries uh, continued to use bacteriophage therapy, and an exclusive institute was established in Georgia uh, to to explore phage therapy and to promote phage therapy there. But uh, with the advent of with, with the emergence of um, antibiotic resistance, uh, since 2000, we have had a renewed interest in in phages, and now. Uh, a lot of phage therapy research is going on across the world, and we have we are, we are beginning. The technology is now available to, to clean up the phage lysis of uh, endotoxins, and we can use we can now use phage therapy as a as a viable option to treat anti, anti antibiotic resistant bacteria. And there are a lot of examples that are available now where patients have been treated using this option and have recovered. Um, without, uh, but they can, so there are other things, they can also be used in combination as well. So a lot of countries and uh, in, in Europe, there are surveillance systems now, uh, now in place to monitor antibiotic resistance uh, in, the, in, in, the, in their area of jurisdiction. And India too has initiated a program uh, in, in 2013 under the aegis of the National Control for uh, National Center for Disease Control (NCDC), and currently there are about 20 state medical college labs in, across the country which are in, in, in this network, which have a role for which have been given the task and uh, of ant antimicrobial surveillance in this country, and uh, the and and so therefore uh, this is a part of the Indian stewardship to prevent. Uh, antibiotic resistance uh, in the in India and to, to India's role here. And uh, yeah, so coming to a very niche area, which is a bit different from what we spoke. So do antibiotics affect cell culture? See, because all of us familiar with cell culture tend to you, uh, know that uh, a lot of antibiotics we have to add to the cell culture media to prevent bacterial growth or bacterial contamination. Because we do not want uh, bacterial contamination in our cell culture media. 
And cell culture media are inherently very rich and very attractive for bacterial, bacteria to grow in. So now, but how do antibiotics affect? Now, it's quite imaginable to think that uh, uh, a lot of uh, studies that are done on human drugs first are, are, are rely upon a lot of in vitro data that is generated in, on, uh, cell, in cell culture, in animal cell culture. So how effective are these? How reliable are these? So when certain studies were done, and I must say there are very few of them, but however, there are, uh, but when certain studies were done to, ex to explore the effect of antibiotics in, uh, on, on uh, various uh, kinds of cells, including embryonic cells, keratinocytes, etc. So it was found that the significantly alter gene expression and regulation. And therefore this can, and this was found to also to have uh, also to have uh, effect on the on the drug response and cell cycle, cell cycle regulation, etc. So therefore, can we do cell cultures without antibiotics? I would say it is very difficult because, um, in general, the contamination in cell cultures results because of because of the personnel themselves, and uh, in the environment actually plays a very role, very important role. So although we try to maintain a lot of aseptic techniques and the sterile work area condition, it would be a very big challenge currently to avoid antibiotics in the cell culture media. But nevertheless, we need a lot of research in this area to find methods by which we can avoid, to find alternatives that we can, that we can use to prevent the antibiotic, uh, antibiotic use in cell culture, therefore, which will have a direct impact on improving our uh, uh, direct impact on improving our use of use of cell cultures in uh, for drug development research. So I leave you with a few research for few resources that are widely available on the internet. That's on the resource site, and I and I uh, I would be ready to take your questions at the moment. And uh, thanks a lot for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Pai. Uh, well, uh, before uh, the question answer session, I would like to give a vote of thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Dr. Pai. It was indeed a very informative presentation. I'm sure our audience must have got the essence of antibiotic resistance, how we all are facing uh, the problem because of this uh, growing antibiotic resistance. Uh, Thank you again for making us more clear about superbugs and uh, fundamentals of antibiotic resistance. Uh, well, I take this opportunity to thank uh, one and all uh, today. Thank you all the participants. I request all the participants to uh, fill the feedback form. Also, uh, based on request of our uh, uh, audience from past webinar, we will be conducting two days workshop on basics of cell culture. If you, if you are interested to participate, please contact us uh, as uh, early as possible to avail the early bird discounts. Uh, thank you all. The session is open for question and answer. Uh, there were a couple of questions uh, which have been asked uh, here. I will just... Uh, yeah. Thank you a lot for uh, giving me this opportunity as well. And it was a pleasure to be part of your webinar series too. And I uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Pai. It was really kind of you. So the questions uh, audience are asking are uh, following. Uh, how many antibiotics have been reported with no resistance to microbes uh, as of now? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, I don't think there are any antibiotics that have, uh, that, that there are no bacteria that are resistant. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't think there will be any. Okay. Then there is another question. As uh, we know, bacteria reproduce asexually. So this okay. question comes from one of the audience that how bacteria transfer their properties to uh, one another. Yeah, that's uh, okay. It comes, uh, it's not that bacteria do, do reproduce, uh, do multiply asexually in the sense that they can, they have a binary uh, division going on. Okay. But mito mitotic binary division. But they also can engage in uh, sex. So the conjugation is a way in, in, is a way in, is, is the bacterial equivalent of uh, sex. So therefore, two uh, back, so two bacterial cells, if they have, if they come together, they can exchange genetic material if they have an S pilot with them. So therefore, S pilot uh, allows bacteria to engage in uh, 
sexual transfer of uh, genetic material between each other. So it, it, that's how they exchange genetic material. Okay. Uh, another inter interesting question. Uh, is integron mediated site recombination feasible by all kinds of bacteria? Potentially, if they have the ATPI site in their, in their genome or in their system, then it is feasible. So it's a matter of a bacteria acquiring that particular site and which it can do so during a conjugation transfer or, an, or, 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 some, or, or between, a, between a strain that has a ATPI already. So potentially, yes. But uh, in the environment, we know. We don't see in the, in the environment. We don't see integrons in all the strains that we come across. But yes, uh, uh, in certain groups like uh, Vibrio, okay, of which there are more than 64 species, uh, uh, 64 species uh, the integron over the years, I mean, evolution has, has uh, integrated the integron into their chromosome. So, which means uh, all the reviewers have an integron. Okay. Uh, there is another question how uh, the Staphylococcus aureus mutated into uh, methylicin? Uh, just a minute. Methicillin resistance. Methicillin resistance uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Can you please explain this mechanism? Uh, this mutation is due to antimicrobial resistance or not? Yes, this, uh, this mutation is due to micro antimicrobial resistance because uh, when uh, we began to see once once uh, methicillin was introduced as, a, as an antibiotic to treat Staph aureus infection, we, uh, uh, Mech, uh, mutants, make a mutants of uh, of staph aureus strains, which uh, we, we, and the make a allows is a penicillin binding protein, which allows the bacteria to bind to the methicillin and inactivate the uh, antibiotic. So it is a mutation that is acquired because of antibiotic uh, exposure to the antibiotic. Okay. Uh, then there is another question. Somebody is asking. Uh, same bacteria, say two Pseudomonas species from uh, mm -hmm. same source, uh, but one is showing antibiotic resistance, another is not. What could be the reason? That's because uh, they have not been. They, one, the other one does not have the have the uh, have the antibiotic resistance uh, gene or uh, or the or the or the tool. To overcome the antibiotic, so that is why it is resistant. It is sensitive, whereas the other is resistant. So in any given population, there will be strains that have and that don't have antibiotic resistance. Okay. Uh, there is another question: ways or modes uh, of antibiotic resistance bacteria spread spread from uh, person to person. Uh, we can't say antibiotic resistant bacteria spread, but with bacteria do get transferred between, in general, bacteria transfer from person to person. So certain studies, I can, I can, I can, I can just uh, tell you about certain studies that have shown that uh, people co-inhabiting co the same household, for example, generally carry the same microbial profile. So which means in, when we share the whole, our home space between, between in, in our home space, then we are also sharing the bacteria that, that, that we carry between each other. So we not only share the space, we also share the bacteria. So therefore, the bacteria, the resistant bacteria, if the bacteria, therefore, which we are transferring to other people in the in our household, and if they are resistant, then we are transferring the antibiotic resistant bacteria. So okay. Uh, people are not really clear about the phage therapy. So if you can, uh, you know, just give uh, uh, a short briefing on that uh, again, please. See, uh, uh, see, when phage therapy, I just put an uh, idea that is uh, in this one. It's an, it is emerging as an alternative to antibiotic antibiotics. So because phages are natural enemies of bacteria, so that means they can lyse bacteria, okay, they kill bacteria. So therefore we are trying to exploit them to use against bacterial disease pathogens. So, so, so the way how it works is uh, we have to isolate bacteriophages. From the environment against that person. Let's say, for example, if you want to if you want to target Salmonella, then we have to isolate phages against Salmonella, and we have to ensure that all those phages are lysic phages, so that they will kill the cell, they will lyse the cell, and not lysogenize. 
So therefore, one criteria of our selection of the parties is that it should be lightic. And uh, then we mark culture the parties, and we can uh, use them against uh, the salmonella infection. So in general, part therapy is now applied and, and, and can be used against burn infections in topical applications or uh, GI, inf GI infections because you can you can in ingest. The systemic infect systemic delivery of phages remains a, a quite a challenge uh, because our immune system can recognize the phages as a foreign particle and raise an immune response against them and eliminate them. So therefore, systemic delivery of phages remains a bit of a challenge even today. But nevertheless, for other topical and uh, GI infections, which are um, on the superficial side, part therapy is a viable alternative. Okay. But it needs a lot of research more. Okay. I think uh, we have covered almost all the questions uh, people were asking here. Uh, there are no more questions, I believe. Uh, so I again thank you, Dr. Pai, for uh, you know uh, accepting our invitation and uh, presenting such a wonderful topic uh, here. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, lectures. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks thank you all audience. Thanks a lot, for, yeah. thanks thank a lot for, uh, for, yeah. for this opportunity yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. Hope it was. Thank you so much. I conclude the session here. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you very much.